Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to Web3 Comic Con. We've got another interview with someone from our Builders Alley, uh, Jayra the Roo. Uh, first of all, hey, thanks for being here, dude. Um, I'm really excited to talk about some of your music, your music production, your entire uh, creative journey. But for those who don't know what you do, do you mind giving a quick introduction on uh, what you do, where you came from, and what you're currently doing in the Web3 space? Yeah, for sure. So I go by Jayra. Uh Grew up out here in Los Angeles, born and raised, uh, been doing music for about 10 plus years, strictly, you know, underground type of hip hop style, hip hop vibe. Um, and so, you know, doing that for 10 years, learning about NFTs and the whole creative aspect over here. I definitely wanted to uh, explore what was going on over here. And once I figured out what NFTs were and, you know, you could build a brand and all that stuff, definitely wanted to start building in the web three space, creating NFTs, building my brand over here. And so just bringing my Los Angeles flavor, hip hop style culture and mixing it with the web three culture and seeing what we can come up with over here. And it's uh, it's been pretty fun so far, uh, learning a lot, still got a lot to learn, but you know, it's a journey that I'm excited for. So that's a little bit about me. I like it. I really like that. Uh, a lot of your, uh, whenever I've gone through kind of your about page, um, you mentioned a lot of like self-reflection and deeper meanings in a lot of the music that you create. Um, I'm curious, can you tell us a little bit more about some of the collections that you put together in terms of NFTs? Uh, the ones I've seen are um, Fudkers, Lyrical Hymns, uh, stuff like that. What what inspired those specifically and what has the response been like? Yeah, for sure. So Lyrical Hymns, that's, uh, that's a collection I put together of older tracks that I've made in the past that never, you know, I never really promoted it, never put them out there too much in the web two world or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I brought those tracks and just started bringing them over here to give people a little bit of a uh, taste of, you know, my style and what I'm about my music, but my main collection that I'm focusing on that I started maybe a couple months ago, uh, building up the ideas for is the Fudkers, the neighborhood Fudkers. And, you know, it's just a fun, you know, it, if you ever seen uh, meet the meet the Fockers, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a mix yeah. of, of that, you know, a little fun in the name uh, with some Web3 terms, you know, FUD or not Web3 terms, but just investing term in general, FUD. Mm -hmm. So I add FUD, it mixed with the Fockers, we get the Fudkers. So Fudkers. something fun. Um, but the Fudkers, basically, that it just showcases my whole style Um their instrumentals and their character creation and through the artwork and through the artwork, through the music and through the character names and their little backstories that I give them it's a mix of uh, web three and hip hop culture, you know, stuff that I I'm growing to love web three and hip hop is, you know, it, it basically raised me. So bringing the hip hop culture makes a web three culture, creating character collections, character creations with backstories mixed with, unique or I, each one has a its own instrumental with it so their music nfts uh how i put this music nft it's just hip-hop culture mixes with web3 culture nft collection and yeah so the instrumental the music is strictly hip-hop instrumentals and I, that's something i want to build a brand behind i want to create the, the fuckers as a brand I want to, you know what I mean? I want it to make it a staple in the Web3 space, something fun, something cool. Right. And yeah, we're just uh, we're just creating that. So I have a one of one OG collection. Those are the 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 first, you know, the OG Fudkers. And then I also have co digital collecting card editions, which are cheaper, more affordable versions. Uh, you know, say the, the one of one OG Fudkers is a full instrumental three minutes, four minutes. The the digital card footers, the the more affordable ones are you know like one minute snippets of the beats and it just looks like a a sports collecting card but it's just each footer so it's uh yeah web three mixed with hip-hop culture creation is what i'm trying to bring through that uh, yeah, I, collection i really dig the term uh each footer and i really like the design uh as well but something I, i'm curious about i wanted to know because I, I was listening to some of your older tracks in lyrical hymns which have these really well woven like uh rhyming schemes and whatnot i mean it's like classic underground hip-hop and i was really digging it i was curious you've, you've kind of moved to more of a a instrumental lo-fi hip-hop I'm, I'm wondering like what was what what why why that change i suppose is that more reflective of the space 
Um, so it depends. I mean, the style that I have it, it, it to each his own. Someone can hear it and though they can hear it as like, oh, that's that's cool, lo-fi hip hop, and someone else can hear it like, oh, that's dope nineties underground LA style hip hop. Mm -hmm. Uh for me, I don't really I I just create what I create and however it comes out it sounds uh you know, some might sound more lo-fi, some might sound just more boom bap hip hop. Um, uh, I don't I'm not specifically trying to go for uh a specific sound like that. I just create what I create and I like you know, whatever it comes out to it, that's how it sounds. But um I say I I, I call my style just like a underground 90s style hip-hop you know right uh but yeah you know also keeping it in mind that that might not be the most popular sound and style for a lot of people uh mm -hmm. the lo-fi type of sound uh helps me reach out to to others especially in this space because a lot of people like lo-fi so yeah i mean my my, it, my style ranges from hip-hop to lo-fi whatever that song that instrumental ends up coming out to sound like that's what it is but um, yeah, nah, I like that. Yeah, very, not, very spontaneous. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, yeah. If it, if it sounds lo-fi, you know, that one sounds lo-fi. My next one might sound a little bit more uh, raw underground hip hop, you know, so I'm not yeah. I don't specifically shoot for a certain sound. It just comes out how it comes out. Cool. I dig that where I'm curious about your journey from early hip hop, getting into music. How did you get into music, first of all? And then why why NFTs? What about that struck you as as you know, enticing enough to enter the space when, you know, you could argue a lot of people see it as controversial or polarizing. There's a lot of stigmas about it. Um, it sounds to me like you just dove in head first. So I'm curious, what what is the timeline uh, for J-Rod the Rule? Yeah, so um, I, I when I was young, I'd say elementary, uh, I had a brother, you know, I have a brother who back then he used to listen to all sorts of LA hip hop and just kind of hip hop stuff back in the late nineties, early two thousands. Mm -hmm. And I would always just be hearing the music and I'd hear the production and the instrumentals. And I was always curious, like, how do, how do people even like create this stuff? How does it, it sounds cool, but I don't even under, like, how did they create this? How did they make that noise do this? How did they do that? Mm -hmm. And so it was like a curiosity when I was young. Tried making beats when I was in junior high. It was absolutely garbage, so I stopped for a while. But I got back into, you know, um, I kind of lost myself for being got into just like mainstream music, driving to school, listening to some music people that were cool that I necessarily didn't like, but I was trying to put on an image. And I, right. I got tired of that, just started realizing what I was doing. And I went and, you know, I just started searching for, for music and hip hop that like, really just touched my soul that that i really want that i was searching for uh and i found it and i just got really inspired i'd say maybe senior year of high school i really started writing lyrics and stuff like that I wasn't producing beats and instrumentals i was just more so writing my thoughts That's and it, it started yeah so stand from that and then i was like you know what this is cool i'm tired of using like searching for other people's instrumentals and stuff let me try to really create my own and match what i'm hearing in my head and what i feel yeah. and put it you know put put everything together so it started trickling down from that started learning how to produce uh around 19 and i you know just i'm 31 now so i've been just once i started i couldn't stop it was a passion it was something that i love and uh i never really put myself out there like that it was never really trying to create my brand I've always just did it for the love of it. And, you know, I would like make I would like to make music. My friends, they would like to make music. We did it just for us because we liked it. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I did feel pretty defeated because I, I would say I did try to, you know, step into promoting my stuff and growing in the web two world. But it's like, I don't know, I felt defeated that the the music industry was hard to create the name out of. It was hard to build your brand. You know, putting yeah. stuff up on SoundCloud, you know, built up a few hundred followers, like 700, but it wasn't really taking off and I felt kind of defeated and I just never tried to pursue it. And then years later, I'm coming to find out about crypto and NFTs and it's a new place for creatives to get going and build and, you know, create. And so I was like, you know what, that sounds interesting. I, I kind of want to start building my brand and, you know, I want to learn about this. I want to put my music out there for others to hear. I just want to build my brand. So yeah, I'm very curious and the type of person I am, uh, I just die. Like you said, I dive into things like spontaneous. 
if mm-hmm. I, you know, yeah. So I just dove into it fully, started for the first six months, maybe a year, just building connections. I wasn't putting anything out as a creative, building connections with people in the space, other artists. And eventually, you know, uh, once I created enough connections, uh, I felt confident enough to, you know, let me put my stuff out here now. And so that's when I started creating NFTs the beginning of this year. So it's been about six months since I started creating. But yeah, it was just when I'm curious about something, I I just dive in fully and I, I want to learn about it completely. And uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. And I kind of found mm-hmm. a groove. You know, I'm still growing, still small, creative in this space. But I found what I want to create and I found how I want to bring it. And so, yeah, now now I'm here. Yeah. What would you say is your your overall kind of feeling on the community of Web3? Overall community of Web3. Hmm. Like, I guess maybe I think in comparison, it let... yeah, in comparison to like, say, Web2, for example. Yeah, well, it's a lot more open minded for sure. I I believe people over here are a lot more open minded because we're all here trying to uh, gain experience and trying to see how this works and what this world's about. So people are more open minded. Uh, I feel like off of Web three, you know, I try to tell you know a lot of the the artists that I've built connections with from let's say SoundCloud and stuff like that. I try to talk to them about, you know, Web3 and just like instantly get shut off. I get cussed at, get called this yeah. and that. Oh, you're part of the scams. So it, it just, it seems like the Web3 community is a lot more open-minded, creative, you know, creative-wise. Um, to where they don't, Web2, they don't shut you down. They don't shut you down right away, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, but not as not as often as Web2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not as often. That's true. Yeah. 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 What what um I'm I'm curious, are there any specific communities you'd like to shout out in terms of like the ones that have maybe supported you the most in this journey? Or have you are you mostly have been focusing on building your own? Yeah, I'm definitely trying to build my own community. Uh definitely trying to build my own, but yeah, I mean, adult fantasy that I've met a lot of dope people there, a lot of cool people who gave me, you know, they they kind of uplifted me, they supported, and it feels good to have people supporting you and like Oh, cool. I, I love what you're doing. You know, it, it feels nice to have people having your yeah. back. Uh, because if you don't have that, you kind of feel defeated. And you know, I got into yeah. adult fantasy 2021 and I I still chop it up with you know some of the people from the community, uh, some of the founders, like they they're just it's just an awesome community. So I definitely gotta give a lot of love and shout out to Adult Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, some other communities, to be honest, I there's not too many communities that that I've really jumped into and was a part of. Uh, so it's it's more so just kind of like the Twitter, the Twitter Web3, uh, uh, crypto Twitter or crypto X, right. whichever you want to call it now. Uh, uh, yeah. I'd say that community and those artists um, and people around there, uh, I got to give them a shout out. Crypto Twitter, Crypto X and uh, Adult Fantasy. Other than that, I, I wasn't really too too much of a part of other communities and if i was the support really you know it wasn't as great as it was with uh let's say you know adult fantasy or some some of the buddies i met through the artists and stuff on twitter so yeah. no absolutely um uh, i think we've mostly gone through the majority of my questions i guess the, the main thing i'm curious is what advice would you give to other creators looking to explore the web free space or haven't jumped into yet because i've seen uh on your youtube channel or on your streams actually you do provide a little bit of insight and in, you know the market and how things are kind of moving and shifting so you're providing sort of expert insight um i'd be curious to know for someone who's completely new to this entire thing who maybe you know like myself i love music i'd love to maybe get into this space what would you tell someone like me who maybe wants to follow in your footsteps um i'd say just uh <clears throat> I, I'd give advice as far as like put it put aside what you think uh, you know I, this is like for my web two music friends that you know cuss me out like put put aside what your your preconceived thoughts of what this is you know it's not a scam NFTs are not a scam it's not a place to scam people there is a lot of scams around here but uh you know let's build something honest and genuine come over here don't knock it yeah. until you try it. And, you know, you, you'll see, you'll, you'll start building uh, an audience. You'll start finding people over here that are really into what you're doing. Um, and, you know, I've grown, 
I was on SoundCloud and, you know, other other online music platforms. And, you know, it took a few years to grow, you know, wherever I was at. But within the span of six months, I've grown over here in the Web3 community tremendously way faster than I did over there for the years I was doing it on Web2 platforms and stuff like that. So don't knock it till you try it. There's a lot of people over here that untap supporters and untap, uh, you know, people that you'll find that really dig your stuff. And the the value behind it is, you know, you could get paid more than you would on like getting some likes on SoundCloud or whatever. You know, you come over here, create some cool stuff that people like, and you'll you'll get paid for you know being a creative. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I'd say just, it's it's yeah, it's not just yeah. throwaway likes and stuff. It actually has value and merit. Uh, yeah, in the space. Yeah. Um, no, cool. Where where I'm curious. Where can people find you? And also. Uh, this is more of a selfish question, but what uh, of your current of the current things that you're working on? I think we've talked about Fudkers. I actually just watched a stream earlier of you um, working on a sample uh, for this, I think, beat making challenge that you had mentioned where you like deliberately uh, pulled out the individual pieces, which was uh, very, very cool. It's not at all a process I'm, I'm in tune with, but I thought it was it was awesome. Is what's your favorite part of being in the Web3 space um, currently? My favorite part of being in the Web3 space, I think it's like the new ideas because before Web3, I, I would just kind of, you know, and it was cool. You know, I write my feelings and write my thoughts and create the things going on in my head and how I feel. But coming into the Web3 space, I feel like it gives me a whole new subject matter and like ideas and things to play with and, uh, you know, instrumentals to create and lyrics that I'm, I'm you know, writing and stuff like that. So, you know. I'm I'm in the process of creating a, a crypto based Web3 based album where I'm just talking about, you know, a lot of Web3 terms and stuff that I words and, and things I would have never have thought of to create if it wasn't for this platform. So definitely tap into uh, a whole lot of different content through music that I could create uh, and kind of refresh it through through that, because sometimes you feel like you run into a wall when you're trying to come up with ideas and thoughts because you feel like you've said it before. But mm, it kind of yeah. just opened a whole new door and a whole new window of like, oh, man, I could make a whole album on, on this that I've never talked about before. So it's uh, yeah, it opens up different, different uh, creative thoughts and different subject matter, but based around the style that I love, you know, so hip hop, web three culture. Yeah, I, I love it. It's awesome. That's badass. I hope in the next coming years you uh, corner the market with your particular style. I think that would be. I think that would be badass that. personally. Yeah, no. I yeah. thanks thanks for doing what you do, dude. You you contribute better to Web3 space every single day. So, you know, and, and for that. fellow musicians like myself, I think what you do is very inspiring. Where can people find you? People can find me on Twitter under I, I should have my name correct right here, but J Raw the Roo. Uh just at J Raw the Roo, T-H-E-R-U at the end of J Raw. Um, you can find me there. You could go check my website, uh, www.jraw.art. Mm -hmm. And you could, yeah, right there. You, it has my links to all my different socials and stuff like that. But I'm really just active uh, on Twitter a lot. Sometimes these days I'm on, on Discord. Not as much. You find me on Twitter just tweeting all day when I'm not working. So, yeah, that's where they can yeah. find me. J at jrawtheroo on Twitter. Awesome. Hey. Thank you so much, man, for coming on and giving us this fabulous interview, giving us a little bit of your uh, perspective and your insight. Um, I think you did fabulously, but yeah, uh, awesome, dude. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And this is probably one of my first interviews, so I'm a little nervous over here. Like, you doing? <laughs> you did great. I love just hearing about your story and your journey, man. Like, it's all good. Um, but yeah, no, right. dude, super cool. Awesome. I appreciate man. that, man. Thank you a bunch. Cheers.